Let's dive right in. This is the most recent free science asset release, namely beakers and liquids. Now, these I've set up for use primarily in cycles, just because I find glass and fluids tend to do a little bit better in cycles rather than an EV. However, you can convert them to EV as needed, and we'll go through that as we move along. If I hit Z and come into rendered view, you can see we have a full range of beakers once this actually loads out, all the way from a tiny little 5 milliliter guy over here, all the way up to a big whomping 5,000 milliliter beaker on this far side, with a good range of sizes in between, detailed in the collection. For each one, there is a fluid, and it is actually just parented to the beaker, so you can move the beakers quite freely, and the fluids will move with them. Now, one of the things that I did here is that if I grab any of these, either the beakers or the fluids, you'll see that the origin point is actually at the bottom, and that is just so that if you wanted to grab the fluids and scale in the Z direction, you can essentially fill or deplete the beaker very easily without having to worry about it scaling in weird places. Now let's talk about just a little bit of the actual beakers themselves and the designs in case you want to change anything. So we'll zoom in here on perhaps one of the more useful sizes, a 600. In fact, no, let's go to a 250. This is a 250 milliliter beaker, and they all essentially have the same design in terms of the actual geometry. If we tab into edit mode, you can see a good number of divisions here. And for the modifiers, we have a solidify, so you can actually customize the thickness of the glass for any of these. You'll notice that under materials, we're using a material offset of one, and that is actually driving the inner versus outer material. And we have a subdivision surface for each beaker and fluid that is disabled in the viewport to smooth actual operation, but enabled in the render to just give a little bit of a cleaner look. When we actually assess what's going on with these, you can see it's mostly in the materials. So we have these nice little panels on the front. If I zoom in on one, what we'll see is that it says, eventually once this actually loads out a little bit, we can see all the gradations roughly placed approximately in the correct area. So each of the beakers is actually dimensioned from the size of actual beakers, but the gradations are just placed by eye. And if we look, we can barely make out here, I'm actually going to change the color, but we can barely make out the size of the beaker, a small amount of text here that says made in blender. I was going to put Pyrex under each one, but I'm not really sure about the legality of doing that given that Pyrex is a trade name. So for now it just says 250 mils and made in blender. On the bottom end here, it says number, 2901 for 2.90.1, the version of Blender this was made in. And I'm going to go ahead and change the material here so that that's a little bit more apparent. So each beaker works on the same basis. The base glass material is in the one slot. So this is what the Solidify is using on the interface. And on the outer face, the essential idea of the material is that there is a mix shader driven by this mask, and it controls whether or not we have a glass being presented which is given here through this principled BSDF, or a opaque surface essentially, and that is what is giving this color. So when I change the color from white to black, we'll now be able to see perhaps a little bit more clearly some of those details, and yes, there they are, 250 milliliters made in Blender, number 2.901, and all the gradations. So if you want, you can actually change the color of these to be whatever you want at any time by simply coming over here and then changing them appropriately. So if you really want, blue gradations on any of the beakers, you can have them. I leave them as white or black, usually just because that's what you typically see in labs. So we'll go back and we'll drag that all the way down and we'll keep that as white. When we come and actually look at a little bit of the node network for this, what we can see is it's very, very simple. We have a mixed shader connecting those two. So again, this is the one for the actual color. This is the one for the glass and there's a texture up here all the textures are saved into the blend file, so you will be able to access them. And I'm going to very quickly show how this works in case you wanted to change something about this. You know, you really want to place the gradations more securely. You're not happy with how thick or thin the text is. So we're going to open a new window, come to the UV editor, and I'm simply going to tab into edit mode and select every face. So you can see I've done this a little bit crudely with UV maps. Everything that is not being used, so all the areas that are glass are over here and all the areas that I want to actually have mass are the relevant areas in these places. So simply to select one of those, deselect everything with Alt-A, scroll over the box that you actually want to manipulate. So let's say I want this to be different, and then hit L, and L will let you grab that. So once you've done that, we can actually zoom in a little bit, 
I'm going to change the color back to black so that we can see what we're doing just a little bit better. And then all you would do is in the UV viewport window, scale or move this. So if I hit S and Y, you can see I can now scale that and make it very squat, or I can scale it in and stretch it out a little bit. I can also hit S and X and make this narrower or wider, depending on how I want that to look. And I've arranged every model to be essentially the same in this respect. So if we switch from the 200 beaker to the 400 beaker, tab into edit mode again, and select everything, you now see we're on the 400 milliliter beaker texture and the same idea. All the unused parts are arranged over here. The parts that cover the actual gradations and the parts that cover the little label are right there. And so those are accessible to anyone who wants to manipulate each one. And I'm going to change this back to white just so that they're all consistent. Now, in terms of using these in Eevee, you absolutely can. I set up everything for out of box, but there's one thing that you have to take into account. So all of these liquids are optimized, or rather not optimized, but they're set up for use in cycles, meaning that they use just a basic principle BSDF set up for complete transmission with a volume, so a volume absorption. And if you want to change how intense this color is, you come down to this density value and you make it greater or lesser. So a lesser value will give you more of a clear liquid and a higher value will give you something a bit more opaque and will really control how dark or bright that is. So I have this set to, I believe it was 0.5 to start, and that's just a sort of light blue liquid here. All of these fluids are linked, but if at any point you want to change them, obviously you can just hit this little 10 here and then change the color and the density accordingly. I want to minimize the number of extra materials that I had in the scene. If you want to, there is a material for liquid in EV, and you can simply change that. And that is essentially just a basic principle BSDF set to transmission with a slightly lower alpha value and the settings appropriately engaged. Now, one thing that you're gonna to have to do if you actually wanna use Eevee for the glass is when you switch over to Eevee, if you come down to the options for the principled BSDFs, and it's gonna take a second to load here, there we go. What you'll have to do is for the glass texture of the beaker, come down to the glass portion, which is this one, and drop the alpha value to something more like 0.5. You can actually see we've lost our fluid in this beaker, and that is because we've essentially hidden it because we don't have the glass set up for EV right now. So if I drop this to 0.5 and then come up to the base glass and drop that to 0.5, now you can actually start to see the liquid through there. Not ideal, but this is sort of the approach that you have to work with. Again, I said these are better for cycles. So if you're going to use them, I would recommend them for cycles preferentially. That wraps up the walkthrough for this set of beaker models. In the future, I'll also be looking to add volumetric flasks, graduated cylinders, Erlenmeyer's round bottom flasks, essentially a full set of lab glassware that ideally you could use to either just showcase some of your work, plan your actual lab space if that's something that you wanna do. Do note that these are not actually the dimensions of real beakers, they are just relatively scaled to one another, but because of how they're set up, you can shrink them down very easily to fit any scene. And with that, thanks for coming out. If you find these models useful, please consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues so others can make use of the models. And of course, until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.